Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, day of trading. So before we kick off uh, what we had today, let's kind of go back, right? Go back in time uh, into last week. If you guys remember last week, we were kind of sitting on the 20 day support for about four out of the five days. And finally, on Friday, we snapped that support. And you can see here, Friday was the first close below the 20-day moving average in, in a quite a while, right? This is quite a while. You got to go back all the way up to, yeah, you got to go all the way back to February 13th. So we were on there for a good amount of time. And the one thing that happens or doesn't happen is if one area of the market, for example, if the bulls lose a big area, it's very, very important, right, that they kind of reclaim back levels right away because the longer we build below those levels, the higher probability the next uh, up and coming demand zone comes into play. And here was a scenario that sometimes the market, right, the market technically uh, takes a little bit of a seed back to its market leaders and their news ahead. Before we move on, guys, if you are brand new, all we ask is take a second like, click, uh, share, subscribe to our channel, and now let's move on with the program. Thank you very much uh, for tuning in. So this morning when you woke up, you had three separate pieces of data come out. Number one, you had the Google-Apple kind of partnerships for its Gemini AI. Anytime you use Google and Apple in a sentence, especially together, you use the word AI, usually good things are going to happen. And Google had a really, really big run up at the open, right? We'll get to the individual pivots in a second. Had a big run at the open, and out of nowhere, it basically sold off five points off its highs. That's not a good thing. Apple, that was its co conspirator, right? Co conspirator in this whole thing with the whole AI news. Well, it kind of did the same thing as well. It had this big, big run up at the open. And then basically gave back about $3 into the close. And then we had the really big, at least nice news coming out of Tesla. Remember, Tesla hasn't had a heartbeat, you know, pretty much now since we lost the 50-day moving average going back to this 230 level. So there was absolutely nothing for Tesla to hang its hat on for the last couple of months. But today they came out with news. They are increasing their price for the Model Y uh, in Europe. This at least gave Tesla a nice big jolt. And what it did was it reclaimed back the five-day moving average and stopped at the 10-day moving average. Pretty good call buying came in uh, into the stock. We saw the 175 weeklies, the 180 weeklies. We saw a little bit of betting coming in for the 185s towards the end of the month. But the big thing was, at least for me with Tesla was, I was about to take it overnight, right? Right now, the stock is trading about you know, 30, 40 cents up, and I decided not to take it overnight. I'm going to probably regret that decision uh, going into tomorrow, but the reason why I didn't take Tesla was, number one, it's still in a dead downtrend. You can see here, every single rally, what happens in the next day? Every big move up is followed by the red candle, and the one thing that we can't do is we can't assume it's going to reclaim and confirm the 10-day moving average. If this was above the 50-day moving average, I would have absolutely no problem taking it. This is actually a great close for the stock. Un uh, unlike the other two names we just mentioned, this basically closed at the highs of the day. The only thing that kept on bothering me was that it did not close up and really confirm the 10-day moving average. So I'm probably going to make, uh, a, you know, probably going to have a, a, a bad waking tomorrow when I see Tesla up two, three dollars at the uh, pre-market. But you know what it is? When in doubt, stay out. I, I'd rather be safe than sorry and have it confirmed tomorrow on the regular session than me taking in and be like, well, I'm not, my heart's really not in it. I like the trade. I don't love the trade. Guys, only make moves in this business, especially when it comes to dollars and cents. Only make moves when your heart is in it. Notorious B.I.G., by the way, uh, and Dan Shapiro. I said it first, I think. Uh, anyway, 
So unfortunately, I did not take it. Uh, it probably goes higher tomorrow, but I, I we're not in the probably business. I want to see it happen, right? I want to see it happen. I want to see it take out pre-market highs. I want to see it take out opening range highs because if it does do all that, uh, it does have room to 81 and maybe 85 if it gets stretched out on a multiple day run. The last thing we want to do is, you know, have the what if game. Maybe it gaps, hope it gaps. You think it gaps? And then you have it down two, three points in pre-market and you're like, ah, I knew I shouldn't have taken it. So again, one in doubt, stay out. But again, I really like the setup for tomorrow if it can confirm today's channel for tomorrow. And the last but not least was NVIDIA, right? So NVIDIA had a really crappy week last week, right? Although it only closed within $30 of the top of the range, you can see there was a lot of selling pressure. And today kicked off, uh, today kicked off the three-day event. Um, CEO of NVIDIA, as of right now, he's speaking as of right now. He's doing the keynote uh, address. He's, you know, they're talking about new products and speculation on new products, the speed, the performance, uh, all that stuff that goes with the chips and dips. Um, the stock was literally all over the place today. It, it gapped up today. Uh, it was up 17 points. Not only was it up 17 points, it actually took out the previous week's highs. And just like, and just like Apple and just like Google on the news, this stock had a disgusting, absolutely disgusting reversal. The stock went from 924 all the way down to 870 before kind of meeting, you know, right in between. Uh, the price actually will definitely change by the time uh, you see this video. Right now, the stock is trading you know, roughly around 882, uh, down a couple of points from the close. But who knows? By the time this guy speaks, is done speaking, this thing could be at 870. Uh, this thing could be at the 905. We don't know. But the, the point is three out of the four companies that had pretty good PRs today, or at least anticipation of an event in such cases, NVIDIA gave it all back. And that's not a good thing. Let's kind of go back to the queues. So Friday, we did close below the 20-day uh, moving average. And today, because of the move right back down, we closed on the 20-day moving average. So I think tomorrow could be a very important day, guys. Again, kind of reverting back to my opening statement. The last thing we want to see, as people who just love buying stocks, again, I trade both sides of the market. For me, I don't care which way the market goes, but I, I enjoy a good bull market. Who doesn't? It's people feel a lot better. Stocks are much more liquid. You have a lot more players. Uh, it, just, it just feels a lot better. Again, I, I don't mind a bear market at all, but a good bull market feels different, especially uh, to the upside. But the longer we stay below the 20-day moving average, the higher probability it's going to be harder to get back above. And it's very, very important to understand that. So it's not like one of those do or die situations tomorrow, but tomorrow will be day three, right? Friday, we lost it. Today, we're right on it. So the last thing we want to do is lose today's lows tomorrow. And definitely, we don't want to lose Friday's lows of 832. Because if we, excuse me, 432. Because if we start losing 432, then we are going to see the rising next demand spot, which is roughly 428, which is the 50-day moving average. So tomorrow, it's going to be uh, very, very important. Uh, as you can imagine today, there wasn't a ton of pivots, right? There just really wasn't a ton. Um, but the ones that went, they really went. So here is the first one right here. And I, I caught NVIDIA today, a couple of bounces really, really well, with some really great bounces today. But NVIDIA, this was the opening range pre-market high. Uh, 90650 needs to build to reclaim the uptrend. And it went crazy. You know, NVIDIA at one point went absolutely out of its mind. Let me show you on the five minute, right? Here's the five minute. So it took out this whole 90650 level and just a moonshot, complete moonshot to 924 before a disgusting reversal. And talk about disgusting reversals. Look what it, you know, look what NVIDIA's reversal did to SMCI, right? This thing, you know, this thing had a, a big move up. You're talking about like a 120, 130 point reversal. And this is a name, speaking of SMCI, this is a name that if it starts losing this 950 level uh, at some point, this thing could really, really get hit. But a really, really good move uh, today on NVIDIA off this 90650 pivot went all the way up to 924. Uh, Tesla, again, like I said, I'm probably going to regret not taking it overnight. But now I'm a little bit, you know, now I'm a little bit, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to have... Um, a little bit, uh, I don't know if it's seller's remorse or buyer's remorse, but I, I don't have a position overnight. I'm kind of hoping for a gap down, a little bit of profit taking, trap shorts, red to green, 
and take above today's channel for tomorrow would be a great day too. Uh, but again, Tesla gapping up on price uh, increase in Europe. The, the good thing, the, the strong part about Tesla, just to keep in mind one more thing, uh, not only did they increase their, um, their price for the Model Y in Europe, they actually got a price cut target today from Goldman Sachs. I think Goldman cut their price target and it was able to engulf that bad news and still take the stock higher, closing uh, around the high uh, of the day. Uh, but nice move here. 7120 needs to build. Uh, here was uh, Tesla. So it took out 7120. 7120 was literally, if you can see here, this is the highest candle into five days supply. It reclaimed five days supply and it really, really went. Nice move here into the 75. I'm going to watch it tomorrow above today's channel. If it gets started getting going, who knows? Maybe we, maybe the rotation will come out of other names and going, you know, go into Tesla. We'll see. We'll see. But Tesla, uh, NVIDIA are really, really good today. Uh, AMD, I really liked at 93.80. It got rejected there twice. Uh, it never got up there today. Uh, Google actually had a really good move, right? Uh, 149.22 needs to confirm the pre-market highs for more. See if we can get a dip first. I missed uh, I missed the dip buy on this thing in the morning, uh, but this thing did confirm 49.22 uh, pre-market and had a really, really strong move. Here was Google, right? Look at this five minute just on the chart here. So it took out it took out the 49.22. You can see here uh, that's the high here from like 7:30 in the morning, 7:35 in the morning, and just absolutely ripped up into the 50. Uh, 52 area uh, in, into the 52 area, really, really strong move there as well. But again, keep in, uh, keep a note, uh, Apple, Google, and NVIDIA gave up all their, pretty much gave up all their gains uh, going uh, into the close. Ironically, I just want to get you guys set up for tomorrow. Just, just because this guy is speaking, the CEO is speaking, doesn't mean the stock has to go higher. Will it go higher? I don't know. But guys, let's watch the bottom of the range as well, right? Look at look at the sixty minute view. Okay, for, it had a you know it had a chance today. It actually broke out really really nicely before it came back in. But guys, let's not discontinue. Let's let's not disconnect from reality. There's an upper channel and there's a bottom channel. We watch both channels. Now, what happens if tomorrow Nvidia doesn't rally, right? And again, granted, there's some crazy aggressive call buying came in. Guys were coming in as the stock was going red. They were coming in for the 950, 970 weeklies. So it was like 100 points, 80 points out of the money for, with four days left. But let's entertain you know, entertain the fact, what happens if it does lose the bottom channel? And this is one of those sell the event type of scenarios. Yeah, this thing could give us a trade there as well. So definitely, definitely, uh, let's keep an eye on that as well. One name to keep an eye on for the next couple of days is Oracle. Oracle had really good numbers about a week ago. It's just consolidating now. This is the first... Uh, you know, back to back day into the upper channel. Guys, let's watch Oracle. If it can start taking out the earnings highs, this thing looks really, really good. Uh, smaller name for you guys, Hims, right? This is Hims. This is the, you know, this is the men's site. Uh, they do everything from erectile dysfunction to losing your hair to, you know, acquiring a second penis. They got it all. You want it, they got it. Nice looking chart starting to break out. Uh, definitely keep an eye on Hims or hers, or they, or it. Again, you got to be politically correct this day. God forbid you should be able to say something that's completely silly without, uh, you know, putting somebody into trigger mode. Uh, look at Swith and Swiss and Swiths. Look at Smith and Wesson, right? Beautiful chart. Another beautiful chun, gu gu uh, gun maker. This looks really, really strong. Let's keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow as well. And Meta. Meta had a really strong close, right? Look, look at the close here on Meta. Really, really powerful candles into the close. Guys, let's watch. keep an eye on this thing. This thing reclaimed back the 10-day moving average, kind of the same way as Tesla did as well. If Meta can confirm today's price action tomorrow, maybe this thing starts shooting up and starts testing last week's highs. Because if it could confirm last week's highs, it could start moving back to the upper channel, this 511, uh, 512 that it had a magnificent run uh, only about two weeks ago. So that's it, guys. Uh, nice to have uh, you guys... Uh, back here with us. Uh, if some of you guys noticed, some of you guys didn't. Um, I took basically about a week off of not recording the video. Uh, the computer that you're looking at now, this is not my trading computer. This is I only use it for charts and um, recording the videos. And I use it for Zoom, and that's too much, uh, too much data, too much data, too much memory uh, that it takes up. So I, I bought uh, a computer a week ago, and it just wasn't enough juice to it. So I had to buy another one. This one's a lot better, a lot faster, a lot stronger. 
and hopefully it will create uh, good memories uh, in the foreseeable future. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night. And with God's help, I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.